You're on mute, Ezekiel. You're on mute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Faithful Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love and yours forever, it never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for re revealing yourself to us through Alishtin. As you open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice through Alishtin. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So can you hear me? Is my voice audible? No, no. It's fine. Yeah. It's audible. Okay, praise God. So we are continuing from what we were seeing um yesterday. So does anyone remember what we saw yesterday? Anyone remembers? No one remembers. Okay. Praise God. So yesterday we were seeing about the um, seeking uh, the Lord first. We saw Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We saw Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto us. Praise God. Okay. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 verse 21. Uh, Joshua, are you putting the scripture? Yeah, okay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Two T's. Yes, sir. Yeah, verse number 21. Uh, just click on the whole chapter, yeah, and then come to verse number 21. Praise God. Okay, see that? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. How great is that darkness? Praise God. So this scripture is saying the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Now, what is this single eye, evil eye? What is it? What is this evil eye? World. Evil eye is when a person is seeing the things of this world. Okay. Evil eye is seeing the things of this world. Okay. Okay. That can work. Correct. Anyone else? Can I repeat the question? What is the meaning of the word evil eye? When we see anything which is contradicting to the word of God. Okay. So, to I is, I'm seeing, I know by the wounds of Jesus I'm healed, but why is, but why is the sickness still there? So it means believing the seen rather than the unseen. Right, Alicia? Yes. Like believing in the scripture, but uh, why is the sickness there? Why is this infirmity there? Okay, okay. Let's go to I. I I'll show you from the Bible. Uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-eight, verse number twenty-two. Okay, let's start. Verse number twenty-two. See that he that hasteth to be rich 
has an evil eye and consider it not that poverty shall come upon him. Now, this rich does not only have to be, uh, you know, with money. This rich could be, uh, what the scripture is trying to say is a person who is seeking healing, who is seeking prosperity, who is seeking to be rich, money, who is seeking everything else rather than God is a person with an evil eye. So who is a person with the evil eye? A person with the evil eye is when he is seeking more of other things rather than God. It is like uh, believing the seen things rather than the unseen things, like how Alicia said. Praise God. So an evil eye is what? Evil eye is the things which are seen look more real to us than things that are unseen. The things which are seen look more are real to us than the things which are from the unseen. Praise God. And that's why he's saying, uh, he that hasted to be rich has an evil eye. So a person who is hurrying to be rich has an evil eye. A person who is hurrying to be rich, a person who is hurrying to be prosperous, who is hurrying to be successful, who is hurrying to be victorious, is a person with an evil eye. Because his focus is much more on the benefits rather than the gospel. His focus is much more on the other things rather than the word of God. So many a times we are living lives where our focus is more on the word of the devil. Our focus is more on the lie of the devil. The more our focus is going to be on the lie of the devil, on the words of the devil, that means I am allowing a spirit that is contradicting to the word of God to enter into my life. That's why he's saying, he that hasted to be rich, he that is hurrying to be rich has an evil eye. The person who is hurrying to be rich, a person who is hurrying to, uh, you know, to be rich, a person who is hurrying to be, uh, you know, hurrying to have his prayers answered is a person with an evil eye. Praise God. So are you understanding? That's why he's saying, he that hasted to be rich has an evil eye and consider it not that poverty shall come upon him. Praise God. So, you know, an evil eye, you know, is a person who stops seeking God and starts seeking his own benefit. Write that down. A person with an evil eye, a person with an evil eye is a person who stops seeking God is a person who stops seeking God and starts seeking and starts seeking and starts seeking the things of this world, the things of this world. That's why you know that word I, E-Y-E, I represents our focus. So our focus can either be single or our focus can either be evil. Okay, come back to Matthew chapter 6. You can just click the back arrow and it will come. Uh, can you tell again? I? The I means our focus. Okay. So if, my, if it's an evil eye, my focus is evil. If it's single eye, that means my focus is single. So what's an evil eye? Evil eye is a person who stops seeking God and starts seeking for his own benefit. Okay, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Hallelujah. So that means this scripture is saying, when my focus is more on the world, that means I am giving attention to the world rather than the word. So single eye, if you see a single eye, 
according to the 22nd verse a single eye so evil eye is a person who stops seeking god and starts seeking his own benefit a single eye a person with a single eye is a person who has one vision right down a person who is having a single eye is a person who is having one vision which is according which is according which is according to the word of god in front of him which is according to the word of god in front of him hallelujah did you write that down so <coughs> excuse me praise god a single eye a person with a single eye is a person who's only seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness okay praise god uh can you just give me the 21 verse 21st verse okay for where your treasure is there will your heart be also the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon so many times uh, you know people ask this uh, when we say no you are not believing the word of god you are believing the word contradicting to the word and the person says but i am believing the word then the person asks do, do you mean that there is a mixture inside of me a mixture of god's word and a mixture of the world can it ever happen no 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 why because he's... no no man can serve two things no two masters yeah no man can serve two masters because either he will serve god and hate the devil or either he will serve the devil and hate god a person cannot serve two masters he will either hate the one and love the other or despise the one or or or, or despise the one and hold to the other so i can't serve god and mammon mammon clearly means mammon in simple words means a spirit of deception that makes you uh, use the resources that god has given in a wrong way are you understanding for example if a person has a laptop the same person can use the laptop for the kingdom of god but the same person can use the laptop for the kingdom of darkness am i right Yes. yes 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 that is the meaning of mammon a, a, a person who's operating in mammon is a person who's using that same laptop using that same resource for the world's kingdom for example he's using the money according to the world's kingdom okay press card now no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon therefore i say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink so that means he is saying i am not supposed to take thought 
for a life what you shall eat or what I shall drink. Because what is meaning by the word take no thought means do not worry for your life. So are we many a times worried? Yes. And are we yes. supposed to be worried? No. No. Someone is asking me, so are we all born with a mammon because we are born from Adam? See, I would say um, Adam comes, uh, sorry, a mammon comes because of sin. So it is, it is not, uh, many times uh, the spirit of mammon is there, but many a times we fall into it. And a person will maybe not fall into it. Because, for example, if there is a spirit of, uh, uh, you know, drinking alcohol, some of them have not drank alcohol. Some of them have drank al alcohol, been, been alcoholics, right? So the spirit of uh, disobeying God and doing the alcohol is all, is there in every person. But some of them are experiencing the result of that and some of them are not. So it is the same with mammon. Some of the people might be experiencing a problem in mammon, but others may have a problem in different area of their life. Did you get it? Yes. Yes. Praise God. Okay. So these people, if you see, are worried about their ascensions. That's why he's saying no thought. What is that thought? Worry. Take no thought for your life. Do not be worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. He is trying to change their focus from what they don't have to what they already have. That's why he's asking, you're saying we don't have enough to drink. You're saying you don't have for your body what you shall put on. First, you have to think, is not the life more than meat and the body more than women? So he is asking, see the life that God has given you. See the body that God has given you. That is more important. Don't We are never supposed to be focused on what we don't have. We are always supposed to be focused on what we already have. We are never supposed to be focused on what we are lacking, but we are supposed to be focused on what we are not lacking, but what we have in abundance, what God has given to us. Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor rate of your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Then behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeded them. Are you not much better than they? So did he say, behold the fowls, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feed at them. Are you not much better than they? Did he say that? Yes. Everyone is confused now. I'll read the scripture once again. Behold the fowls, for they sow not. No one spotted it yet? Okay, I'll read it once again. Behold, Behold the, fowls the fowls of the air. Did he say fowls or did he say fowls of the air? Fowls of the air. Fowls of the air. Fowls of the air. So what is the difference? Fowls and fowls of the air. Well, so the I think of birds. And what does it mean? What is then why if you say birds, then why why he did not just say behold the fowls? They are also birds, no? Like free birds no, and cage are, birds. So, okay, some are in the cage. They depend on humans. But yeah, thank God no one gave me the answer. Thank God no one gave me the answer. Certain birds can fly, certain birds can't fly. So, uh, for example, a penguin, a chicken can't fly, but other birds can fly, an eagle can fly. So that's why he's saying falls of the air because some birds can fly. Praise God, no one gave me the answer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Okay. 
Behold the balls of the air, for they soar not. Now the reason why he's saying balls of the air is because there are two types of birds, as you said. Birds that are free birds and birds that are in the cage. If you see the free birds, they are not dependent on someone for their food, but they're dependent on God to provide their food. But if you see the birds who are in the cage, they are totally dependent on their master who has put them in the cage for their food. Yes? Yeah. Now he's saying, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Now why he's saying sow not and reap is because at that time when Jesus was there, we, they did not, you know, today if we want to get something, we'll go to the shop, pay the money, get it. For example, if you are going to buy some bananas, go to the shop, pay the money, get the banana, right? Yes. Yes. But at that time, it was not like that. At that time, they would have to grow it. Today, some farmers grow it, and that is why we enjoy it. We don't have to grow it. We just go it in the shop and get what is already grown for us. But at the time of Jesus, they had to grow it. And that's why he's, and, and people who completely dependent on what they would have sown and what they would have reaped. That's what, that was what people were dependent on. And that's why he's saying the birds, they are not dependent on, they don't sow, nor they reap the harvest, nor they gather into barns, just like how a farmer will gather his crops, gather his uh, corn, gather his harvest into his barn. A bird does not do that, the bird in the air. Yet, he doesn't do all that. But yet, but yet means what yet means, but, but your heavenly father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Was it the birds who were created in the likeness and image of God? Or are we created in the likeness and image of God? We are created in the likeness and image of God. We are created in the likeness and the image of God. So, if it is us who have been created in the likeness and image of God, who is better? The birds are better? Oh, we are better. We. Because we are created in the likeness. We are created in the image of God. And it's why saying, are you not much better than they? We are. We are better. Yes. Praise God. Okay. Uh, praise God. Right on. I don't. We are never supposed to be. We are never supposed to be. We are not supposed to be. Dependent, dependent on our own self, on our own self, on our own self. But we need to be dependent, but we need to be dependent. On God. On God. Press God. Okay, see that. Uh, which of you, by taking thought, I'm reading 27th verse, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, what is he asking? He's asking, can any of you Add a, a cubit means add a day or add an hour. What hour? Can we even add a minute? No. Oh, can't. And that's why he's asking, can we add even one day, one hour or one second to our life by worrying? No. Th that is why he's asking, what is the point of worrying? And we in worry many a times. 
Yes. Yes. God is asking us, what is the point of worry? Will I get anything out of worry? No. 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 How am I able to experience the plan of God? The way I'm able to experience the plan of God is because my focus is not on myself, but my focus is on the word of God. So he's asking, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for him? So first he thought, first he's asking, why are you worried for your food? Now he's asking, why are you worried about the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. So what is Jesus saying? Look at the lilies of the field. Have you ever seen the flowers? Okay, someone is asking me, what is raiment? Raiment means clothes. Okay, they call it raiment, clothes. Uh, you can just put it in other translation. Let's go. Okay. Can you, can you put in another translation, Joshua? If you go up, you can put a school up. You can put AMP, Amplify. You have to click on Enter. Verse number 20. Seven. See that, uh, 28. And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wild flowers of the field grow. Now he's not speaking about normal flowers, like how we have flowers, sunflowers, but he's speaking about wild flowers because wild flowers don't have an owner. Otherwise, the normal flowers, we grow them. We give them the water. But otherwise, normal flowers, he's asking, Normal flowers of the field which grow by themselves, you see, they ask you, have you ever seen the normal growing flowers without anyone watering, with anyone doing? If you see when yes. they grow, they shine, they reflect the sun on their petals. Have you seen that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that is clothing. See how the lilies and wild flowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Praise God. Maybe when Jesus was explaining, we don't know because maybe there were fields and because he's saying lilies of the field grow. So maybe there might be fields and flowers growing. Who knows? Maybe Jesus was explaining that way. But because Jesus is speaking through examples, he is revealing them through examples. And that is how he's teaching us today. Just like how the lilies, how the uh, flowers, the flowers grow by themselves. They are shining in the sun. Now, in the same way, God also wants us to be loaded like that. And that's why he's saying, yet I say, 29th, yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these lilies. These lilies, they are not being watered. They don't have an owner. They are just, God is providing them everything they need, the right soil. God is, the rain comes down. How does the rain come down? Because of the power of God, because of the ability, because God created this world on a system of, you know, and God is taking care of so small detail of this world then why won't he take care of us? Why won't God take care of us? Praise God. Okay, see that. I always like to ask the question. I like to ask the question. Lord, if you could take care of so minute details on this earth, won't you take care of us? That should be our question. Because when I'm asking that question, I am getting a deeper understanding of God's love for us. So does God love us? Yes. 
Do you this die for us? Yes. Yes? Jesus will die for us? No. I asked that question on purpose to see how many of you were paying attention. Will Jesus die for us? No. Has he already died for us? Yes. Yes. Why did he die for us? Because he loves us. John chapter 3 verse 16 gives you the answer. What does John chapter 3 verse 16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Don't put that. Don't put that. Don't put that. No problem. It's okay. So, uh, John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So has God given us a promise? Yes. So he's saying 30, I'd say that, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, if you see the grass of the field, no? Grass of the field is the grass always needs uh, nutrients, plants always need nutrients, the lilies of the field, grass, all need nutrients to grow from the soil. They need nutrients to grow and that comes from soil. They suck up. They need, uh, they need to be hydrated. Okay. And grass, if you see grass, will someone ever water the grass? What do you will call that person? Watering a grass? Gardener. Come on. You will call that person a fool. Who will water the grass? Grass, everyone will come and step on the grass and you're going to water the grass. Have you ever watered the grass? You will water flowers. You will water plants which are bearing, you know, like trees or you will water plants that are bearing, uh, you know, maybe they are bearing some fruit or food, vegetables. But will you water grass? No. Of course not. But God takes care of the grass and he made a system where the rain comes down and it waters the grass. Did God make that system in the beginning? Yes. So does this prove that God loves us so much that he finished everything for us once and for all? See, many a times people were suffering for oxygen in the COVID, right? Pandemic. Yes. And what did they have no. to do? They had to give them fake oxygen, right? Yes. Yes. Now, when they're giving him that oxygen, the God is saying, I have provided the oxygen for you, which is enough for the whole human race, for the whole earth, and you are making your fake oxygen and using it? Right? Yes. God has created, uh, if there is a new child, no, God has created new oxygen. So if there are thousands of child all around the globe growing, no, born, maybe today, today there is a child growing, every day there is a child born, so every day God is creating new oxygen for that person. Right? Yes. No. No. Why? Because he made it on a system where it is through plants, plants breathe in the carbon dioxide, which man breathe out, and they give man oxygen. Now, if you see, God created the whole earth on the system so that it can work for us. Am I right? Yeah, but we are so worried, no? If God can take grass of the field, which is the least of the least, where people are stepping over grass, they are walking over grass, if God can take care of them and make them look green, alive, sap, then won't God take care of you and me? Yes. Nisa is asking, us, but if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? The reason why God is saying little faith is because he is trying to say, we are in little faith because we are operating in worry. We are operating in anxiety. That's why Jesus is saying to these people, listen, only one single focus is required. Okay, see the 31st verse. Therefore, do not worry or be anxious 
perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do, hold on, but do. Joshua, can you please follow? Yeah, thank you. But do not worry for your heavenly father knows that you need them. So who, who where did the, where did the um, nature of being worried came from? Gentiles, pagan worshippers. And that's why he is saying, what God take care of you because the Heavenly Father knows everything that is needed for us even before we go to him and ask him. And because God knows everything that we need even before we have asked him, he has already provided. That's why he's not creating new oxygen. He's not creating new trees. He's not creating new food because he has already created it on a system where it is already provided for us because he knows what we need to live. And that's why he's saying, boy, your heavenly father knows that you need them. And see that, but first and most importantly, seek and act, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and not some of these things, but all of these things will be given to you also. So some of these things will be given to us, right? All of these things. So has God already provided whatever we are needed? Yes. Yes. What do I need to do? I only need to believe it and receive what God has provided to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, scroll down. Let's see four. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we are not supposed to be focused on ourselves, but we are supposed to be focused on God. I'm supposed to be focused on his word. I'm supposed to be focused on the truth. I'm supposed to be focused on what he has given to me. That's why he's saying strive after, seek the kingdom of God. Amen. When I'm seeking the kingdom of God and I'm seeking the righteousness of God, everything else shall be added to me by default. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So did you understand? Are there any questions? Understood. 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 Okay, write down. Last point. Write down. Whatever I focus on Whatever I focus on is what is what is what I am. Giving focus to, giving focus to, sorry, giving strength to, sorry, giving strength to, and what I is giving, I'm giving strength to. Prescott. 
So whatever I focus on is what I'm giving strength to. Hallelujah. So if I'm focusing on my weakness, I'm strengthening my weakness. If I'm focusing on my sickness, I'm strengthening my sickness. If I'm focusing on my curse, I'm strengthening my curse. If I focus on my bad habits, I'm strengthening my bad habits. But if I focus on God's love, I am strengthening my, you know, I'm strengthening God's love in me. If I focus on healing, I'm strengthening my healing. If I focus on deliverance, I'm strengthening my deliverance. If I'm strong, I'm focused on what God has done for me, blessing, healing, deliverance, I am strengthening it. And that's why the Bible says, let the weak say I am weak. All right? Yes. Does it say? Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. So are we supposed to be weak or are we supposed to be strong? Strong. And how am I giving strength to it? By focusing on it. That's why you wrote down whatever I focus on is what I'm going to give strength to. So how do I strengthen something? I strengthen something when I give my attention to it. When I give my focus to it. Our focus, our attention needs to be on the word of God. Our attention needs to be on the Bible. When our attention is on the word of God and our attention is on the Bible, I am surely able to experience what the Lord has for me. Praise God. So did you understand? Are there any questions on this? No. Hallelujah. Did the time went very fast. I don't know if you felt that. Praise God. Yes. Okay, yes, it? Need... yes, it went very fast. Need to listen again and write down the notes. I missed so many points. Yes. Praise God. Okay, raise hands if you understood that. Four of you, good. Praise God. Bye. Okay. It's okay. Over to you, Nishanti. Praise God. Really lovely teaching, Alistair. Focusing on God. What is your focus? So, uh, Brother Johnson also had taken this session for our adults' Bible study. So, it was a good revision. And uh, you know that verse where you said uh, where your treasure is there will your heart be so this was something that uh, long back i had listened to and i was like wondering how do you know what is in your heart you will set aside time for prayer you'll set aside time for word of god but is your heart really there so someone told me the easiest way to understand that is what is what are you thinking of all the time so whatever you're thinking of all the time, what is in your mind is what your treasure is. So if that focus is on the word, the focus is on God, then that is where your treasure is. But if you're always worried about your job or your, you know, so many other things, then the, your treasure lies there. Your heart is there. Yeah, I will upload the session as soon as possible so we can all hear it again. Thank you very much, Alistair. See you all tomorrow. So tomorrow's Monday. So it's at nine o'clock. I think uh, people forget because we keep changing the time. So that's why weekends it is lesser, lesser numbers. Okay, we'll wind up with the prayer, Alistair. If nobody has any, okay. I think Filda and Ezekiel have their hands raised. Yeah, that is to say, I think that they understood. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Then we'll wind up with the prayer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth, giving us the understanding of your word. 
Lord, it is this word that is setting us free, Lord. Lord, we, are, we make this decision to focus on you, to seek you, no matter what may be the circumstance, no matter what can be the situation, Lord. We make this decision to focus on your word. We make this decision to focus on you. We make this decision to keep our attention on you, Lord. Because, Lord, the more we are going to be focused on you, the more we are able to experience your plan working in our life, the more we are able to experience your purpose working in our lives. In our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us this amazing truth. And Lord, as we have heard your word, we are sure, Lord, to apply the same word, to apply the same truth, to apply the same gospel in our life also, so that we are able to experience your plan, your purpose for our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray above Father. Amen. 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 Thanks, Amen. everyone. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Have a blessed night. Mr. Kenneth,